Okay, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Let me know that you hear me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, basically, yesterday was an easy day. If you didn't have an easy day yesterday, you should email me. Uh, but I'm telling you that today will not be easy. Uh, there's actually quite a few gaps today in both directions, but again, a, a real lack of quality here. And the market is going to be tough today. So let's start out with that. <clears throat> market is strong, very, 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 very strong, and this is a neutral gap. It is not a down gap. It's not an up gap. We are neutral in the SPY. Neutral in the SPY, and we actually look bullish in the QQQs. Jeez, Louise. I didn't even look at the market yet this morning, to be honest with you. Here, this is my first look at the market. The media thing that comes up immediately, right out of the gate, first thing that I see when I see the QQQs is strength. I'm reading strength in the gap today. It's neutral, but I'm telling you this is bullish. Jeez. I didn't even look at the market this morning. I actually didn't even look at it at all. Oh, this is, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a tricky, tricky day. Yesterday was easy. Today is not going to be easy unless in the live, live market time, which is all going to be me. I see something in live time that I call that we do that's amazing. And I don't know if I'm going to get that or not. I have no idea. I like to see it in the gap. And I don't see it in the gap today. I just got to tell you, to be honest with you, I do not see. There's nothing grabbing me. I don't see... Nothing's grabbing me in any of these gaps today. I rated the gaps. These are valid gaps. We're going to watch the gaps. But I'm telling you right now, I don't. nothing is grabbing me in any gap today. I don't see it in the gap today in any of the things I looked at and in anything that I rated. We're going to watch them. They're valid. They're valid to watch. I rated them. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a tough day to trade. It won't be easy unless I see something in the live price action between 930 and 945 that I call that I see that we do. And I'm telling you, this market is tough. And I just saw this, and this is bullish. <laughs> I didn't even look at the market this morning. So we can hold today. And what did I say yesterday? <sighs> Thursday and Friday, the market's going to continue higher, make a new high. So today's Thursday. Could do it today, could do it tomorrow, could do it today and tomorrow, could rest today and do it tomorrow. It is going to do it. And now I just saw this bullish and that just confirms what I saw yesterday. Boom. I actually think this is going to break. This is actually not a great gap, except for the fact that I think that this chart is lower and it's just not going to set up cleanly to be aggressive. But I actually really do like this here. But the only way this goes right today is with the market, and I don't see that happening. This actually is does not rate well, but I think it works. It's very, 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 very whippy and spready, and this could run up $2, hold, and then flip and go. But I don't know if I really want to deal with that today. I actually like this, and I put the numbers in the room, and this could work out as well. I think it's too spready and too thin, and again, this is what I'm saying. I don't see this here in the gaps today. Nothing's grabbing me to go after and do. I did not rate this. Could this work? Yes. Do I really like it? No, not really. And, you know, Lina just asked about this one. Yeah, I rated it. Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah, I saw it. Do I like it though? No. The answer is no. Could you do this? Yes. If you want me to watch this, I will. I'm not doing this. I don't really like it and I actually don't even think it works. And I can't even give you a reason for that. I'm telling you instinct. Instinct, I don't think it works. So this, this is going to work. This is good too. The, the, the best things today, actually right here, right now, the best thing today are the continuation gas. What do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I can't watch five things into the open. I, what do you want to do here? I, I, don't, I don't even know what I myself should do here today. I'm telling you right now, HPQ is lower. CHK is lower. The continuation gaps, I have 100% conviction, are lower, and I like, but they're not fast plays, and there's no volume in these things. DDD is going to work. going to be wild. INTC, we're not going to watch. Taser, we're not going to watch. LKQ, I'm not even going to watch. And this actually, it's been so long since I've traded this. I just know this isn't going to have a crazy spread like this. But this is going to have a spread, but it's not going to be like this. I didn't put it lineage because I didn't have time today to do anything that I don't, I'm not going to do. You know how to do the rating. You know how to do the gaps. You did the class. If you want to do it, even conviction, go for it. 
I really can't spend my time in the morning doing stuff that I don't think is going to work. That's really where I'm at with it, you know, and there's too many things in earnings season. If I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. If I don't like it and I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to do anything, then I'll call or spend time figuring something out for the room. But if I don't like it and I have something else I want to do, then I'm not going to spend my time on it because I know I'm not going to do it and I'm going to do something else that I need to spend my time on. Does that make sense? I actually think we should just watch this. I don't think this gets over 35. And I'm not saying that this is going to go right away, so that's the problem here. This could have one quick play down and go or rally up first and hold 18 and go. But I actually think HPQ, HPQ was so good yesterday. So good and and, and, it, and it, it worked. It went. I made money in this. It didn't fall off a planet. I expected it to. And I'm telling you, that could happen today. I really think we should watch this. This could actually fall off a planet today. I expected it to yesterday. And this is on its own. It has nothing to do with the market. I really have 100% conviction in HPQ. And, and, and I do. I just do. I do. So I think we have to watch this. So, but this is a continuation gap. But I think we can be aggressive on this, and I just don't even feel like I could be aggressive on anything else for Pete's sakes. Shoot. I mean, I can watch one more other thing here. It's just like... I think we should watch HPQ as the main one. I, I This is really where I'm at with it. And, and worst case scenario, this doesn't set up because over 35, I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do anything. I'll have DDD up in the middle. I can even put this one over here just for show. Or I can, what do you want me to watch as a third thing? S I think we should watch SFM now. Here, let's put this here. Listen, if the LKQ goes and you want to do it, you know how to take the trade. I feel like I can't even press the button that. But it very well could go. I'm telling you today is not going to be easy unless I see it in live time. I can't predict with accuracy today that today will be easy unless I see it in live time. I can predict today will be challenging because I do not see it in the gap. And I'm telling you, you should be careful because you should be up for the week. Everyone should have had a great day yesterday. And you don't want to give that money back today doing silly things. If you don't want to do anything today, that's fine. If you want to wait to see if I see HPQ, that's fine. Good luck. <clears throat> First target in this, though, is the same as yesterday. The whatchamacallit, the HPQ. So just to review, I'm looking at short HPQ. I don't know when. I don't know what time. I don't even know if it sets up. I have SFM in the middle, which I like, and DDD over here, which does, isn't great, but I still think it works. And I'm not watching the other one, which is LKQ, and you could watch that, and Taser, and IMTC. I'm not crazy about any of them. But you could watch them. And we can go back and look at them and see if they set up. DDD. So we, 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 I'm not going to be aggressive in this until I see the volume, though. i got to let you know. SFM. This is like the only thing that has any volume. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is this is SFM is starting to go. HPQ, I'm gonna do, I don't have the entry yet. Stock's gonna be 60, 65 though. I don't have the entry yet. I don't have the entry yet. 45 by 65, 45 by 65 HPQ, and SFM is setting up, and I, I I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't call it. I'm trying to call HPQ. SFM, look at that. Look at that. There it goes. There's a vine coming into that. You could you could be in that. I didn't call it. I didn't call it. I'm watching HPQ, but there's the FF, SFM. 
I don't know what the spread is in this. Ah, crap. Oh, it's still thin. It's still thin. It's still thin, though, but that just set up. Here comes the volume in this now. And just wait on this. I'm watching. Here, HPQ, 45 by 65. 45 by 65. And then I'm going to go look at the other one. Don't take it till it hits. And all is not lost in the SFM. We didn't miss that because the volume is just getting into that there. So HPQ, 45 to 65. Did it hit? It looks like it hit. I didn't, I didn't get in it. Did anybody just get in that? Am I having an internet problem today? I didn't even see that hit. Now it just looks like it's in the chart. I don't know if I'm having a lag here. But I didn't I didn't just hit it. I didn't see it hit and then it just looked like it hit. I'm gonna wait till it hits again. But if you're in it, that's fine. Stop 65. That's weird. I'm not in it yet because I didn't see it, but then it looked like it hit printed on the chart. Forget DDV. You know, I bet that still works. I had the resistance at 30, but don't touch it. It just looks crap. It's probably going to go over 30. All right, I'm waiting for HPQ. Let's take this off here. That's a no-go. I'm not in anything yet, but you could be in this. So you could be in the HPQ. Uh, I did not do it because I didn't see a trigger at 45. It looks like then it printed on the chart that it did. I'm going to wait till it hits it again. If it's going to work, it should. On the SFM, I'm watching that. The volume's in it now. And DDD, don't do it. Don't touch it. And then LQ or KQ, I'll look at it in a second. And the other one, too. I, I'm not in anything yet. Just wait. Okay, don't do anything with CHK. And this is still really thin. What the heck? That is just too thin. No, it's really thin. That 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 SFM is so thin. So thin. And if you did this, I did not call it. But if you did this, the stop was big. And I actually, it had a move in here. I would have gotten all out of it. We'll go over that. This might be the end of the trade, though, in here. So I didn't call this. If it sets up again, I'll call it. If you did this, the stop was big. And I actually would have taken it all out there. We'll go over that. All right, here. We might get a better entry. Um, 46 by 65. 46 by 65 HPQ. 46 by 65. And I wouldn't be tight with the stop here for reasons we'll review later. Oh, it was 46. Some of you are saying 46. It hit 46. Gosh, SFM is going, but I still think it's too thin. If you really want to short SFM, put the stop at 36.60. It's it's 50 cents. I can't even look at the chart to call you exactly there in SFM because I'm trying to watch HPQ and I still like it. But SFM is going. SFM is going and and I didn't call an exact entry in that. It's just rolling over. So I'm sitting here watching HPQ. I hope I don't waste my morning on this. If you do the SFM, put the stop at 60. And I'm roughing out the spread here. Let's do 40, 47. 47 by 65 HPQ. 47 by 65 HPQ. I really hope I'm not wasting my morning on this now here because the SFM is rolling over. There, there goes FS, SFM. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I didn't call an exact entry in this. It was too thin there, but I just called it. You could do it. I, I don't even know if I put the targets in the room. SFM's going, and I may have wasted my morning on HPQ, but I guess we're going to find out. 47 by 65 HPQ, and SFM is working. I was the only one that rated well. This is still going to do it, though, but I really, these are not fast. SFM was a quickie. I 
this is really taking my whole life here. And you can't preempt this. If you're already in it, that's fine. It stops 65. I did not hit it yet in HPQ. It happened really quick, and then I thought my internet was delayed. It looked like it didn't see, I didn't see it in the level two, but I saw it in the chart. Now I'm going to wait, but we're going to get a little bit better of an entry, not by much. 47 by 65, and make sure you have a stop where I'm telling you to put it. This is not a new gap. You know, the minute I look at something else, this will hit, so I just can't right now. I still think there'll be an entry again in an SFM. Target was 35 on that. That was the target on that. I just remembered in my head. Gosh, come on. Market's holding. Man, I, this is a great call I just made in the market. I told you I just saw strength in the in, in the in the cues. I mean, can you really look? Wow, jeez, this market. It's really something. Oh, no. No, oh, this didn't hit. This did not hit. If you didn't in there, the stop was 65. If you did C45 hit back where I called it earlier, which I didn't, but if you saw it, you're still in this. Remember, stop 65. We're not off this yet. This is going. You could short SFM right here, right here now, put the stop at 36.15. Actually, it has to be bigger than that. It has to be 36.20 because of the spread. This is a 50 cent stop to get down to 35. There it goes. I did nothing with this today, and it's working. This was very thin in here, but then I said you could take it here. Said to put the stop here. Jeff B. did it. You could do this here, though. The stop's got to be 36.20 because of the spread. This is going. It's still really thin, but that is working, and I didn't uh, do it. I didn't do it at all. I'm in nothing. So I'm sitting here watching this, and I didn't do it, and I'm not in a trade. I'm not in a trade at all, and I'm trying to see if I'm going to do anything here today. And this just fell off the planet. Taser, look at this getting clobbered. Well, Taser. I'm, I'm just relaxed here. I didn't do a trade. I'm going to wait and see if HBQ holds the 65 number that I gave. I did not do SFM. If you did, this target's 35. It's very whippy and trading strange because it's very thin and it's very spready. DDD was a watch this morning. It couldn't have, I said it can't get over 30. It did, so I never called a trade in this and nobody should have done it. INTC, I did think would work, but it would be sketchy. It needs a market. And I'm not going to call a trade in here, even though it looks like it's setting up. I just don't like it. LQKQ. Did have one quick trade in there. I think that's it for this. So I'm not going to call a trade in this. I think it flips and goes over the high. So if you did that on your own and did have a move, you should have been all out of it. I'm waiting for a better setup in this. If it rallies back, which I don't know if it will, and I'm actually still watching HPQ, but I don't want it to go over this area. And if it does, then I'm not gonna even going to be able to take it. I've done nothing today. I was really fine if I didn't do anything today because of the fact that I really had a good day yesterday and I needed something today that I had a lot of conviction in. This just rallied up and held and is trying to set up here again the CHK. It does have volume. The spread is thin. If this sets up, I can call it. Didn't break yesterday's low yet, but could. This has a decent target in it, though. I did not call this, and I wouldn't have called it there. I, I, I have nothing here to do. I'm sitting here, and I didn't do a thing yet today. So Taser, if it sets up, I'll call it. HPQ, I'm still watching. SFM, if you did it, you're almost at the target. LKQ, if you did it, you should have been completely out. I think it flips. And DDD, no one should have done. And I'm not in a trade. I'm not in a trade, and it's 941. <sighs> so let's just relax, people. Told you this wasn't going to be a fast morning anyways. 
So let's see here if HPQ holds. It held 65. All right, let's see if this holds. This is still not dead in the water. Haven't done a thing. Haven't taken a trade. Haven't done a thing yet except for look at everything. Taser fell off the planet into the open, and I didn't have it up. If I had had this up and saw that, we could have done it. I didn't call it, and I didn't do it, and I didn't even read it. And it actually opened much different than where it was gapping this morning. This is still valid if it even sets up. But I really still actually like HPQ. Stopping this now is going to be 70. Let's do 59 by 70. 59 by 70 HPQ was valid. It held 65. It looks like it touched right on it, but it didn't hold the number which I wanted to. 59. 59 by 70 HPQ. This is a good entry. I'm doing it. This is a great entry, actually. And don't do it if you don't want to, but this is okay. I, I wasn't in it at all. And, and if anybody was in it, I don't know if you got dinged out or not. Did you or didn't you? It looks like it did touch 65. I'm doing this 59 by 70, and that's probably all. There, there, HPQ. HPQ, the stop in 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. And you know where this goes? It goes to 34. And after that, I don't know if it goes anywhere. Here, this is a great entry here. Did anybody uh, do it before? And if you did, did you get dinged out? This is actually okay. It touched right on the number that I told you. So it looks like it did from my, from my chart here. Did, you, did anybody do that or not? And if you did, did you get dinged out at 65 or not? It looks like it touched it, but it actually held the number that I wanted it to hold. So I'm doing it. I just did it. I wasn't in it before, and I thought, crap, I was going to miss it. But actually, we got a better entry here now. And actually, this is a great, at 34 here, this is a 5R trade. I'm in it. What the heck is going on with this thing here? Wowie. And I caught nothing in this today. Not a boop. And it's just going. And it's not even setting up right now. Okay. All right, so I'm in this, and this is a good entry. It's a solid entry, but this is still going to be snaily. What does that mean? It means until it breaks a little from yesterday and convincingly breaks through a 3450, which it really didn't do yet, it's not going to get any traction. So don't expect to be in this and be out of this in five minutes. You didn't do that trade for this. This is a continuation gap. And why did I do this today? Because the only thing I thought was really, really, really lower. I thought this might work, but I wasn't crazy about it, and it's definitely not, and I never called it. INTC uh, is weird looking. Overall on the chart is lower, but not today here. It's not going to get any help from the market. LKQ did work for a quick trade in the morning. This is going to flip and go green. If you did that, you were on your own, the stop was massive, but you did make money. I think it was a little bit more than one R, but I didn't call it. I didn't rate Taser. I didn't rate this whatsoever. Uh, this didn't even gap here where it opened. So the actual price of the gap was nowhere near where it opened. Sometimes that can happen. And it was also thin. So I didn't rate it. And that's why I didn't watch it. I didn't pay any attention to it. But this did open and fall off a planet. And because I wasn't watching it, I didn't call the trade in there. And we would have been trading on the fly if I'd even seen it. But this is valid. If it does rally back, we can do it. Uh, Mr. Mom is talking about HPQ. I, this is, I'm telling you, this is, remember, this is like a continuation gap. That's why I gave you a number that was nowhere near the number over the high. I gave you a number where, that's why I said here, this is going to go, right now, it's setting up on a five-minute chart. 54 by 70, you can do HPQ in the five-minute chart. This is a five-minute entry in here, people. This is good. It has volume. It's almost 2 million shares. Here it goes. This is, five minutes just triggered. This is going to work. But I'm telling you, I gave you that number that, when I call these ones like this, just always put the stop where I tell you anyways. Just always put the stop where I tell you anyways if you're here. You always have to put the stop where I tell you. But anyways, did anyone do this here and get dinged out at 65? Because actually, I didn't even see this hit. But it looks like here it did hit 45. Jaffo said he didn't see a hit at 45. He said 46. And then this looks like this hit 65. So if you did have the stop at 65 and it hit, you would got dinged out. I don't know if anybody even took it. Was anyone in it here or not? I wasn't because I didn't see this hit, and then I thought I had an internet delay. Surf Dog did it, 
did you get hit out? And if you did, did you retake it? Or did you just, uh, did you let it play on through? I'm going to call a trade in this right now. CHK, stop 17.85, right here, 23 cents. CHK, stop is 17.85. I'm calling this right in here if you want it. There, I'm not doing two things, continuation. This is going to go. There, this is a good entry, 20 some cents, 25 cents, CHK. I'm calling it, and I am not doing it, but I just see it, and I'm in this, and this is going to go, people. It's going to 34. It's going to be a five-hour trade on a continuation gap. That's hilarious, but I really did believe in that. Here, this is fine, too. Um, if you are in this, I'd be very, very careful. Uh, I'd, I'd be very, very careful here. Here, I'm going to call this again. I'm going to call a better entry with a better stop if I can here. This is just so spready for Pete's sakes. Taser, big stop, but it's not going to get over 24. It looks like it's going to roll over again. You can short this right here, put the stop at 24.10. 24.10 if you want to short Taser. I'm not doing it. It is a kamikaze. It's going to go right on down to 23 and break it. You can get make one, two hours out of this right now. Who knows? It could even go to 22. I didn't do it. I didn't rate it. It didn't open anywhere near where it actually was gapping this morning. This got better as it opened. But the reality is I didn't do it. I didn't watch it, and I'm not doing it here. But you could do this right here. It's a valid call with a stop at 2410. It's going to roll on over and break 23. And wherever it goes, just sit out of it. It's more like a scalp. I call it a kamikaze, but it's a scalp trade. This is already underway, and it's not going to back up anymore in here. So you either do it now or you don't do it. And I'm in the HBQ. And this is going to work. And here we go through 45, through 40. It's going to be a nice, easy peasy trade on a day there wasn't anything I liked. And on a day where I said the market was going to hold strong, which is crazy, but it's true, 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 true. And even though there's red, if anybody even writes in the rooms is falling off the planet, I'm going to scream. Do you know that I did a webinar last night? And someone was arguing with me, which I kind of just saw in the corner of my eye and then just kind of just... I addressed it like very, very quickly that someone said the market was going to fall or I don't even know what somebody said. It didn't even make any sense, but many things people say make no sense. And um, they were talking about the fact that the market wasn't higher. Oh, I know what they were saying. The person was saying, and I can't look at the market right now because I got to look at this. The person was saying that in the webinar that the buying that was happening, the rally that was happening recently in February was from retail people buying late. That is completely 100% not true and is, again, why it takes a skill to read charts because that's not true. I can see why people would say that because the rationalization is there, but that's not actually what the price action is telling me. And, again, this is a skill. It's a skill to see what is actually institutional buying or what is retail buying or what is people buying or traders buying or, or, or anything else. I want to talk about the day. It's important. Um, and I also want to talk about one more thing here. HPQ had a place to do an ad, and I wasn't aggressive on this yesterday with ads, but I was in my own sizing. Here, this is going to work, people. Mm, great call by my part. I was patient, and I almost just wasn't going to do anything today, and I waited. This is so late for me to be in a trade. What's up? This is going to work. That's the high of the day. 65. Where did I even get that number? Man, I hope everybody did it. This was a great call. This is a great call. This is going to be a five and a half hour trade. It will go to 34 today. And from that entry I just called, that is smashing. <sighs> today is not going to be an easy day. And you can't be upset for not doing this. It didn't gap at the right place. It just opened. It just gapped down and opened and fell off the planet. You can't, you can't predict that's going to happen unless you see it in the gap. And this here set up again, but I'm not doing it. And I'm not doing it. I didn't call it. I didn't like it. But if you did it, it's working. And if you did it again, it's working. But I still think it has a possibility of flipping. But I'm, so I'm not going to call it. I'm just not going to call it. But if you did it on your own, you're up. And this thing here, oh, I didn't call it again. Here, Jeff B. did it. I was going to try to call it again. I got involved with the HPQ. Here, this went, to, this is the target. Boom, 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 boom. You're at the target. You're out. This is the trade in this. It's done. Don't think this is going to some dream number. It's not. Market's bullish. SFM. If anybody did this, you just did the trade, you're out. Did anyone do it? Yep, Jeff B. covered it, out, boom, done. What pop's moving today? This pop. Uh, this pop is moving today, trader gal, and this was a top watch today. In fact, it's the only thing that rated good. 
I wanted to see more volume before it set up, but once again, thin, thin, the volume came in and fell off a planet. I called it a couple times, and I think Jeff B. did it. Did anybody else? Line 38 did it. Jotho, did you do it? Even if I had called it again there, you know what, though? It's, it's, every stop in this was big because of the spread, but it was valid, and some people got it. This is the target, though. Here we go. HPQ, let's pay attention into 10 o'clock. Let's see when we get on down. Any bounce at 34.25, we're out of half, and anywhere we go. This will get to 34 today. I, You could have held this overnight. <coughs> you could have held this overnight. Here, beautiful. Here we go. Did anyone do this? This was another nice call. 20 cent stop. 20 cent stop for the possibility of going to 17, which is three R's. Did anyone do this? Jaffo, did you do it? Trader gal, did you do it? Did anyone do CHK? I called it very late. I didn't like the way it did what it did in there, but I saw where it held, and I see it, and I saw it, and I called it, and that wasn't a kamikaze. It was a real trade, and you could be in this. Surf Dog did it. Jaffo's in both. Jaguar Paw did the CHK. I didn't want to do two ten continuation gaps, but I did say, actually, in the room this morning, I said the best thing I like today, the most conviction I have of, of any of the things today is not new gaps, which is weird. It's very weird but that's how I felt about the day. And this is going to push back until it breaks a low from yesterday. And what was the other one? Shoot. I thought there was another one. What was the other one from yesterday? We didn't do it. <coughs> I don't remember. There was one more, too. Wow, look at this. Now I'm going to wish I did both. Wow, well, that's fine. Okay, this is done. This never worked. This is still holding here and holding 24, and actually you could still do this, and I'm not. It's very, very late, but it actually looks fine. This is, I never did anything with, but it did have a short in there with a big stop. Did have another move in here that's 50 cents down in here, and I don't know where it goes. I don't think this breaks the low, but actually you could be doing this, and if you did it, you're very, very tight with it, but I didn't call any trades in this at all today. Um, and I'm in this. And let me look at the market. That's it. All right, is anybody in anything else? Weird day, which I kind of told you. SFM was thin. To do that aggressively, I know that I wouldn't have done it. I called it the best I could with the stop because it just had a big spread. And some of you made money in it. I don't know how many hours it ended up being with the stop, but you're up and you're all out. L K Q I didn't like, and I still don't like, so I just never called anything in it. Uh, I called a late trade in CHK, but the stop is valid. Uh, didn't like the rally to the open, but then it looked like it fixed itself, so I did call that, and that should get to 17. DDD flew like a wild man over 30, so that was off immediately. And the taser didn't open where it actually was gapping this morning. So I couldn't have predicted it would do what it did, and so I didn't watch it either. But I still think it has another break in it. It's a late, 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 late call. And don't give up on HPQ because we have the number of the right price for the stop. And you can even take more here. I'm not doing that, but you can even take more here. So let's talk about how we played this through yesterday. <coughs> now this, this, is, this is a really nice call in here because of what the possibility is for the risk unit, which is very, it's, it is highly unusual that you get a better R play in something on a continuation gap, but I'm telling you right now, actually Staples, Staples, Staples was better the second day with their risk unit profitability than the day of the gap, but that gap wasn't amazing. So you could have done this here and got the drop. Many of you got all out. I really am not sure why. Not that I couldn't have faulted you for taking some profits. It came into the target the whole number. But the bottom line is it didn't hardly go anywhere. And I don't know why you would have taken the whole trade out. If anything, you could have taken more here. And so you really could have just nailed the sucker yesterday. Because I did take more risk up here than my normal R, I didn't do the ad. But you could have done the ad. The problem is I felt like you couldn't have really lowered the stop for a while. Eventually you could have. And actually, at one point, I think I said 35, and that actually held the entire day, by the way. I don't know if anybody lowered it to there, but I didn't. <clears throat> okay, but I'm saying I think I gave that number. In fact, I'm sure that I did. Anyways, it dropped on down. I got out at half, and then I let it roll over, and I didn't see the low of the day exit in this, but it was good. It continued down to 40-something. I don't know why this was so tired. 
market bullish, who knows, whatever. But it actually had a nice gap and a good move. When you get something that you like, for example, look, this is good people. Who? Tell me, be honest here. Who did it and who just killed it because it just pushed back up in there? Did anybody kill it when it pushed over 50? This is going to go. It's going. Anyways, um, what was I going to say? When I say NCOF, which I did say about this yesterday, okay, you could determine to take more risk. Or you could do the ad in those. So you have two choices. Take more risk, do the ad, or just play regular. But everyone should do it when I say that. Like of all, That should actually be in your trading plan. When Melissa says, no chance of failure, I'm doing the gap. I don't even care if I don't like it. I'm just going to do what she says. If you want to risk, same, fine. If you want to risk more, I'm fine with that. I don't think anyone should be taking double the risk unless you're me. And I didn't take double the risk on that yesterday. But there was an ad in there. So you could take a little bit more than one in the first, and you could have done the ad. The reason I didn't do the ad is because I did notice that it wasn't getting going fast enough. And that what didn't set me off the train, but I knew I'd have to be in a long time. And therefore, I didn't want to have a heavy size position and have to sit like I have to babysit it for 10 hours. That's what gets then bothersome. So I let myself be with what I had with it and stay with the trade and did everything well. But I wish that I could have done the ad. I didn't. I could have. The price wasn't that different from it. I did it because I knew with the size position I would have had to take and the length of time I would have had to be in it, it might have bothered me. Uh, and you did have to stay in this for like two hours, I think, or longer. It was a long trade to get it down. You tried to take some more in the push but didn't get the fill. Are you talking about HPQ today or yesterday, Jaffo? Which day are you talking about? Can you get an attaboy for selling your 500 CYBR? CYBR. I don't even, did I even talk about that? I don't even know what this is. I didn't even look at it. Um, I'm guessing you bought this. I would not have bought it. If you want me to congratulate you for making money, I guess I will. I, I would not have bought this at all. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you bought this and you made money, I will congratulate you for being profitable. But I'm not going to congratulate you, Jeff B., for having some sterling trade here because I just don't see it. This looks like a spready, wild monster beast. It also has topping tails all over the place, which tells me it's traded by a lot of machines. Look at the five-minute chart. Ew. And if you're in this, I'd get out of it. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like it at all. I'm glad you're up money. I'm very, very glad about that for you. But I don't think this is a good trade. But if you're up, take the money and run like the dickens because I just don't like the way this looks here. But, you know, I just don't like to do things unless they're perfect. Look at this. Did anyone do this kamikaze? I t oh, man. Here, did anyone do this? I called a late, late trade in this. There's no way I could have called the first one because it didn't even open or gap anywhere near where it actually opened. But I called that there. I said it was holding 24. It was a kamikaze, but I said it was going to roll and down to 23. And by the way, this will break 23. Did anyone do this? Did anyone do this at all? Yeah, good exit on that since you did it. Sometimes you can come back from a trade that's not great and have a good exit, but it's like, why chance it? Oh, I'm not even paying attention. Oh my gosh. With your explanation points, Galahad, I thought this was at the target. I like panicked for a second. This just drops 10 cents. Oh my gosh. You people are so funny. Oh, so getting back to what was happened from the webinar yesterday. I did a webinar with eSignal. It was, it, I think that was the biggest uh, webinar as far as registrants. I don't remember the exact amount of people there. I don't think that was the most amount of people I ever presented in from. But from the amount of people that ever actually registered, it was one of the biggest webinars I ever had registrants for. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you do a thing like that where you get a very crowd and a new crowd, you get all kinds of people. Regular people, nice people, mean people, crazy people. And you do get the crazy people, which I'm aware of because there are crazy people that are out there trying to trade the market. But uh, 
I stayed on pace with what I did, which I was very glad. I started to see the negative comments from people, and then I stayed on track with what I was talking about. Uh, but one of the, there was two commentaries. Somebody said something about the market I wanted to talk about, and somebody said something else um, that I want to just talk about here briefly. And stay with this. They said, why would an institution sell out of something, meaning like HPQ, for example, okay, and take a bath in their position? Look, this is a nice trade. Trader gal, did you do this today? I hope that you did. This is your kind of trade here. And actually, you could have done them both. Here we go. HPQ. I hope it doesn't bounce off 30. Here, hold on one second. If this bounces off 25, I'm going to have to get out of half of this. That is a number. Hold on. Shoot. Wait a minute. One second, people. No, I know it's going to keep going, though. Just wait. One second. Hold everything. No, I'm going to stay with it, but you could get out of half right in here. You actually could do it. I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing the time of the day here. I'm seeing the 15-minute chart, but I'm telling you right now this didn't break 25. You get out of half this. I, I'm really going to try to do my best to hold the whole trade down to 34. Here. It's going to break, try to break 25 right now. Yeah, go, 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 go. Did anyone not do this? This is a great call. Stay with the conviction. Stay with the conviction, 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 conviction. I had conviction in this today, and I did it, and it was a great call, and this is going to end up being a huge risk reward train in the middle of a day of a week where I didn't like anything, and some things worked today, but I just didn't see it before the gap, so I couldn't have called it. And I didn't care if I missed those things because I because I didn't like them in the gap. Here, HPQ. If this bounces here, I'm out of half, but I'm really going to try to hold it. Hold on. Did anyone not do it? I can't imagine why. I can't imagine why anyone wouldn't do it, but did anyone not? Come on. It's going to break it. Stay with it. It's going to break 25. Come on. Just wait one second, I'll answer your question in a minute. I just come on. No, it didn't break it yet. Gosh darn it. No, you could get out of half right here. I, I'm I, I'm I'm really gonna hold it. I just decided. But I'm telling you right here it bounces, it didn't break twenty five. So you get out of half the trade right in there. Here it is, it's bouncing. There's the balance of the number. I really fully believe this gets to 34 today, but you could have just taken half out and you had time to do it. All right, anyways, get, getting back to what I was saying. Um, so that one of the comments was, why would an institution take a bath on something that they're in? That was one of the most ridiculous things I've actually ever heard. And it, it, but it was enough for me to discuss it and address it along with what the person, it was the same person I think I've said it about that. It, it was actually so important that I feel the need to discuss some of these things in the room that other strangers say because it's a, this is something for you to learn from. That would be like saying, so this person is saying, I'm just giving you the mentality here or what I think this person's point was. The person is saying if, if, if an institution is long HPQ, they didn't write all this, but I'm get, garnering this off of what they said. That if a person's long HPQ, they're not going to sell out of it and sell out of the gap. This person believes in gap fills. And take a bath on their position. That's what this person was trying to say. In other words, he disagreed with my entire philosophy here. Look, this is going to try to make 25 right now. Come on, HPQ, you can do it. This is the, He disagreed with my philosophy of why gaps continue in the direction of the gap, which not all gaps do. As we know, you have to rate the gap. It has to rate 20 points or more part of the 26-point rating system where it's not going to work in the direction of the gap. Do all gaps rate like that? No. Can you short every down gap? No. Do some down gaps get bought? Yes. Do you want to call that a gap fill if you feel like it? I hate the terminology because people think it's a strategy then. It's actually not. I don't want to go into why that doesn't work right now. My point is, though, that the guy was saying, hey, if an institution's long in the HPQ, they're not going to sell out of it and take a bath in it. That is not true. Does anyone want to guess why that's not true? I'm going to explain to you why that is the most 
why that isn't true. And actually, I can understand why someone would say that, but this is, the, this is what separates the winners from the losers. This is what separates the people that know what they're doing from the people that don't. This is what separates me from a lot of other people out there that are trading and teaching. This is what separates the people that are smart from the people that are not smart. And I'm going to say not a, not a bad word. I'm just going to say people that are not smart. Does anyone want to guess why what that person said isn't valid and doesn't make sense before I explain it? Because it, 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 it's insane, actually. It's as insane as shorting the market, which that person commented that they were doing, too. And I'm going to address that as well, again, for the purpose to teach you something. Um, Simon says it was in HP groupings that hit 34.45 and it filled the order. But that's not where I called it, Simon. That was like a million miles late from where I took the entry. But, but I don't know why you actually did it so late. I have no idea why you did it that late, Simon. Unless you're talking about the first trade. Or are you talking about the, the second trade? The second trade entry was not 45. Oh, okay, you're in the second trade. Took it all out in the 3427 because you have a lot of work going on today. Great trade. Thanks, Melissa. See you tomorrow. Oh, all right. So if you did the first one and killed it and did the second one and got all out, you're up. I thought you meant you did the second one at 45 again. Staying with HPQ would take half at 36. 36? You mean 34. Okay, Great Gatsby is the only one answering my question here, though. Great Gatsby is saying because an institution will see better opportunities maybe in another stock. That's a valid point. That's an absolute valid point. That is correct. That's part of it as well. That makes sense, Great Gatsby. What else? Anybody else? This is going to break 25. Come on, you can do it right now. 10.08. Let's go. Two more pennies. HPQ. We're going to have a faster trade in HPQ today than we did yesterday, which is a bizarre world. Here, anyone else? Great Gatsby's point is valid. Nice rubber band forming here in HPQ. Love it. I guess that's why I'm staying in this. Huh? I guess that's why I haven't taken any out. Um, Great Gatsby is saying that an institution would see a better opportunity than other stock. That makes sense. Does anyone else want to guess anything else? Meh. They made enough money with options on the stock. No, this person is saying that the person that the institution would might be like would take a bath on it. I don't even know where they're getting that. But like let's just say that they're that, that person is right. In other words, that an institution bought a stock and that then they are down in it. He and his philosophy was they weren't gonna get a give up on the trade. Do you understand how that makes no sense? And this is beyond what Great Gats be saying that they see better opportunities, <clears throat> which which they might. No, it's nothing to do with options. Here. Here we go. Nice call. Here we go. This is it. This is a trade. It's going to go right down to the number, and I'm all out, and that's my day. And then I really actually just want to go back to bed. What a nice trade here. I want to, but I can't. <laughs> Look at this. Here we go. Actually, I have a lot of things to do today, but I have a huge headache for some reason. And I already took something for it this morning. It's not going away. They jumped, they jumped in LL yesterday? I didn't even look at this. I didn't even look at this. This is a better afternoon play. Um, let's pay attention. Here, this is the trade, people. You can put an order out at 34 to hit you out, but it could go on down and break 34. It probably will. This is it. This is it. It's 10-15. Here, hold on. I'm not even holding this whole thing down in here if it bounces, but I do think it keeps going. Holy crap, I'm good at this. What do you mean? This trade here, this call? This was a great call. This is a this is a this is a stock swoosh savant call or a swoosh queen call right here today. To I mean for me to tell you to put the number at 65 and have it touch on that and hold that. That's genius. <laughs> I don't even know where I got it. Here, I just got out of half. I'm not holding the whole thing down. Put the stop in for the rest. I still think this goes, but I just got out of half. All right, now getting back to what I was saying. In fact, let's just look here if we can put it any better. Now, it has to be at 70, but I just got out of half. 
All right, getting back to what I was saying was, and I still think this keeps going, but I just decided that was the right thing to do. Um, <clears throat> no piggies today. No piggies today. No piggers. Anyways, the all of you are right with what you're saying for the basic most part, but that's not what I was trying to say. What I was trying to say was that person was basically uh, insinuating or assuming that institutions will never assume a loss. Do you understand how ridiculous that is? That's like saying that if you have millions of dollars, you're never going to sustain a loss. That's like saying that no one ever loses. Do you have any idea how many actual hedge funds make money that are out there or ones that don't? I mean, even if you look at the scale of large money position people that are in the market, they don't always make great trades. Some of them lose. That, I mean, for that person to say that tells you that person has absolutely no conception about how anything works. And because it was in a time frame constraint yesterday, I did not address that in the live webinar. And I was trying to stay on pace because the person was very antagonistic. Here, this is keep going to go. But I really wish I would have had another hour to talk, not just about what that person said about that, but also the market. But the reality is that that was like assuming that any large institution in the market will never take a loss, that they will refuse to take a loss. That is insane. Does everyone understand that that's insane? Because if you don't, then you need to. And if you don't, then you need to ask me right now why you don't understand that that's insane. That's like saying that anyone that it has a hedge fund or an institution or any bank can't afford to take a loss. First of all, if anyone can afford to take a loss, it's them. And second of all, they have to manage their positions. They have risk managers too, for Pete's sakes. They cannot not do something that isn't right. In other words, if they're in a position and it, and they are and they're down in it and it's not right anymore, they ha may have to take a loss. That that person was basically saying that no large institution in the market can afford to take a loss or will take a loss or will accept a loss. That's false. And actually, if I ran a hedge fund, which I don't, but if I did, I would accept a loss in something that wasn't working out if I had to do it, and I would run a very well-run hedge fund if I did that. And you will have to do that sometimes. It's no different from us, basically, meaning that there are times where you were going to have to take a loss. And it doesn't matter if you have billions of dollars or millions of dollars, you may have to take a loss. And it may be a hard-hitting loss, but in the end, if you're good, you should make it overall. But sometimes you're going to have to do that. Otherwise, guess what? You lose more. And in the case of these large position people, the difference of not exiting something on the day of the gap if it needs to be done, even if they're down, it could be worse. And it would be a lot worse because of the position size and the money at risk. So it was insane for that person to say that. It was the most irrational thing I've ever heard in any webinar. And I feel the need to point it out to you. Because there is so much stuff that people talk about that makes no sense. Everything I say to you actually makes a lot of sense. I don't even know if you get that. Some of you absolutely do get that. And actually, some of you that I've gotten to be friends with really get that. Because you see in me something that we are on the same level. But if you don't get some of the things I'm saying, then I'm telling you, think about it. Because for that person to say something like that was is as insane as anyone shorting the market. But I could even rationalize why people are shorting the market, which I'm going to talk about next. But I'm telling you to assume that anyone that has a large position in the market, like an institution, will never take a loss and therefore has to support every down gap and be bought to fill the gap is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And I've actually been doing webinars now for two and a half years, and no one has ever said anything so ridiculous. I actually really need to talk about it in the next live webinar because it was so ridiculous that if people aren't taking my class because they think that, then then they are missing the full understanding of what institutions mean and how they act in the market. But what Great Gatsby said still was true too. They can take a position in something else. So you take a loss in something if you have to get out, and then you can put that money to work in something else that's performing, like buying a stock, perhaps, maybe, like Disney, which, by the way, is at 105 and Disney's at the dream target that it could have got to the day of the gap. And Disney is beautiful. Look at this. It hit through 105 yesterday. I didn't even see this yesterday. 106. Look at, look at that. Power of the gap. Anyways, they could buy Disney then or something. So Great Gatsby's point is valid too. But that's not the real thing that I needed to tell you about what that person was saying. And actually, you could be all out of this trade here. It's 1015. Should we take all out of it? We're
Uh, I really think it gets to 34. Anyways, um, I am at a half this step. But the point is, that person is assuming that an institution can't take any loss. They must. They must take losses sometimes if something isn't working. Because if they don't, it could end up being worse. And, and you, you know, you want to talk about these things like where we took, sometimes people, a person gets a margin call. Do you, you know, it's not like there's, I mean, ready cash accessible. It's not like if an institution is down in something and they say they're going to hold it through, like, that is a heavy, 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 heavy duty position. Like, it, most of these places are err on the side of conservative. Like, most of these places, that the, the good ones, okay, the really good ones are actually, I'd say probably 95% or more conservative with, with, with their picks and their position sizing, more than 95% of the good ones. And there might be a small mark. It could, it's even it's more than ninety five percent. It's it's the the positions that these take that where there's real risk involved of not being conservative is less than five percent. It could be less than two percent. The the people that are investing in these things are have a lot of money. So listen to me. This is this is really good stuff. I'm saying. Is anyone paying attention to anything I'm saying? The people that are have these money that that are running the hedge funds that 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 put money into these funds, the people that are running these things are wealthy already. Do you understand that? So therefore, they are not feeling like regular people feel a lot, where they feel like they absolutely are desperate for money and they only have ten thousand dollars and they have to turn that ten thousand dollars into hundred and they have to do it in a month. That way, when you have millions of dollars and you have billions of dollars and you're you're in a position like this, for the most part, I'm generalizing. I'm saying that they don't need to have excessive risk because the profit that they need to make on the amount that they have to make, they don't need to make excessive amounts to still make it. In other words, the conservative factor plays a part because it's worth it because they don't really need to make an excessive amount. Does this make any sense? Like, and I'm talking percentages here because we're talking about over the course of a year and something like investments. This isn't day trading now. I'm talking about like, for example, say you have a hedge fund if you have a $10 million hedge fund, let me just see here if I can come up with a number that's going to make sense. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I don't even know what the average rate of return is for hedge funds in 2014. Someone Google it. Google it right now. Somebody can Google it and tell me what you think. You're welcome, Cruiser. Or what did it? What was the average in, in uh, 2014? I don't, I don't know. But if you, if you look at percentages, you only need to make a small percentage. For example, if you have a hedge fund that has a billion under management to, to pay out profits to be profitable versus because you have such a big amount of money. Do you understand? So you're not going to take the, such great risks to that because then it could be very detrimental. Does this make sense? Does anything I'm saying even make any sense to anyone? I, I don't even know if I'm explaining this right, but I hope I'm getting my point across and why what that person said made no sense, because it really made no sense at all. Line 30 in said yes, good. Gallon says yes, Jeff is a 7.4%. That's actually pretty good. Well, not as good as some, some as what I was thinking, but for last year, pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> What do you mean trail stocks for the last five years? And by the way, if you want to be tight with this, you can put the stop at break even. If you want to be tight with this, you can put stop at break even. I'm not going to do that, but you could. I'm not going to, Jeff B. You could put it at break even. I'm not. If you want to put it at 56, go ahead. Okay, so that was the one thing I wanted to address that was very important. And guess what? That person that was being antagonistic is doing a webinar tomorrow. And I think even, meaning today, I think even with that same sponsor, the person that was sponsoring it wrote something in the room that addressed the person. And when I talked to the person after the webinar, he felt bad because he didn't know who that person was. I don't know what username they used, but he didn't recognize it. But they said they had a webinar tomorrow, meaning today. And they were trying to be negative to me in the live webinar. It was completely unprofessional. And the place, e-signal, 
was actually very nice and professional and then felt bad that that person was being antagonistic and wrote, wrote something in the room. I was staying on the track of my webinar, but I like saw it in the corner and I talked to the guy after. But it just goes to show you, and again, these people are professionals. It's interactive data. They are a massive company. And they've seen it all and been around a long time. And, you know, it was really unprofessional for that person to be attacking me in a webinar when they were doing another one with them in a day and using a fake name or whatever. And it just goes to show you the low level of people, again, that are out there doing trading education. I consider myself a classy lady, a class act all the way. I was before I started teaching trading just as someone to know, and that didn't change me being out in the world in public. In fact, if then it's anything even more. But there are a lot of people out there that are just ridiculous and very unprofessional, a lack of professionalism and just a full-on lack of class, just gutter. And so I get that when I talk to people when they complain to me about spending money for classes. I, I empathize with people. But I can't allow that to affect my decisions for people as far as what I'm doing for myself with my business. Okay, And I don't want it to affect my trading. And we did talk about this early on in February. And, and do you see, I mean, do you people remember the talk I had two Fridays ago? Do you see even the difference from that moment that I came to that realization? about some of the effects that things were having on me in that time period of that one a week or whatever, those couple of days. Does any, did anyone even notice that? Like, does anyone even listen? From the moment that I addressed that I was doing a mental reset from the negativity from talking to some people, do you look at what, look at the last two weeks of trading here, the calls I made. That is the power of your mind. Jaguar Pa says yes. Me too, girl, what? Surf dog, what do you mean? What were you referring to? It is crazy, Jaffo, but you know that we live in a crazy world. Surf dog says I'm classy, yes, thank you. But it's like, you know, uh, I came off well with that sponsor because I handled myself very well under attack in a group of people in an event they were sponsoring. Here's HBQ. Here it goes right now. And they're not going to forget that. So I, this is a new relationship that I have now with eSignal. And they saw me under fire and how well I handled myself. So that boded well for me. But the point is, though, that and somebody was asking me about losses. Uh, you know, I was talking about trades in the webinar that worked. I didn't talk about trades in the webinar that didn't work. Someone emailed me a question about that, too, and someone said, did I ever have losses? And, and you know, I answered that question very well as well. I said, are you asking me facetiously? Because it's ridiculous. For people to even ask questions like that, it's a ridiculous question. Everyone that trades will take a loss at some point. Not every single trade I do works. You know that you're here with me. And it's ridiculous when people ask those questions. And, and I know they're facetious. I don't think anyone doesn't believe that people don't take a loss. But I actually did talk about in the webinar the trades from yesterday. They weren't cherry picked out of anywhere. They were the trades from February 25th on the day I did the webinar. And I talked about them in the webinar. So, you know, it's like people have unrealistic expectations about trading, but their own mental attitude is very often negative if they've been through the ringer in trading or the market or classes. I get that, but that has nothing to do with me. And I really don't want it to let it affect me. And I'm constantly doing my own positive reinforcement so that when I do these presentations, they don't affect me. And I did a great job yesterday. And I reset myself about two weeks ago after I saw that it was touching on my mentality there briefly. And ever since then, I almost can do no wrong here. I mean, if you haven't had just the best last two weeks, I don't even know what to say to you. Now, you might not have done some of the trades because you thought the price points were too big because I know Fossil was expensive. And there, what was the other expensive one? I forget. There was another expensive one we did. But you could have done them. And we're almost out of this, but I think it's going to break 34. You think the strategy has to be good for the trader? Yes. A lot of people making money doing stuff they're just not comfortable with. Yes. Good thing I didn't tear, tear his eyes out. <laughs> you don't want to see me get mad, Jaffo. I'm not a person that would you would want to be enemies with. 
I'm a, I'm a wonderful person, I'm a nice person, I'm a loving person, but if, if you, we ever come to odds or if I come to odds with someone, it's like you don't want to be at odds with me. So, I mean, that was, that was the kind of the funny thing about these people like asking me these questions. It's like, you know, I trade the market. I taught myself how to do it. I lost money teaching myself how to do it. Do these people not think I'm a strong person? Like, give me a break. Like, really? Come on. It's, it's weakness for someone to hide in, and use a fake name in somebody's webinar and attack them. That's weak. That's not strong. That's a sign of weakness, not a sign of strength. And it's a sign of strength to anyone that can teach yourself how to trade with their own money, which is what I did, and take a chance, which is what I did, and you don't know how the result's going to be. Because I didn't know. I mean, I knew in my heart because I believed in myself, but I didn't know when, the timing, exactly how much I lose till I got there exactly how much I'd make and you know once I did figure that nobody knows it's all an unknown life is an unknown and you take a chance you've been a polygraph examiner for 25 years I never knew that you think you can read that pretty well I never knew you did that you know that I can defend myself you have no doubt <laughs> Jaffo you're a polygraph examiner that's what you do I had no idea that talk about unusual jobs you know what I should, I should have something, oh, what can I do? We can, what can I do with the website with, with everybody's different backgrounds here? Gosh, help me think of something fun we could do. Everyone here has such different backgrounds. It would be interesting to see everyone's, it's so varied, it's almost unbelievable. Here, hold on, this didn't get through to 34. You, hold on, I'm talking here now. And I'm, This is no number at all, but this is bouncing, and I, I'm not paying attention now. I'm still staying with it, but you know what? Let's lower the stop to break even now. I didn't do it before, and I'm not putting it any tighter, but just in case. I'm not losing on the back half of this. That's the end. Break even stop on this for me. It didn't break 34, and I just, actually, if I had just seen that in there at 10 or 12 or something, I would have taken it out. I, I'm giving this a chance, though. I'm not saying to get all out of it here at all. I'm not saying that's the low of the day, but I'm just seeing time of the day and the bounce in here. Yeah, I can do that great Gatsby. Do you want to track it for me? Because I don't feel like I want to. <laughs> but you could. Make 30 cents on the LKQ. Not as much as you, though. Would love to review doing our one-on-one -on -one to see why you didn't like it. Okay, sure. My name is a fly fishing guide to Puff Daddy Fish Whore. Oh. No, but I'm saying people's careers. I'm saying people's legitimate careers. I'm saying people's legitimate careers, but actually I only know some of yours. I don't know all of yours. And I'm saying your backgrounds. Like, I'm saying that's interesting. Like, Jaffa just told me what he does. Like, I didn't even know that. So what I'm saying is those of you that have other jobs, which, which, which you do unless you're a full-time trader, and if you're a full-time trader, then you had another job before you did this, whatever your other profession was. I'm saying it would be interesting to note that somewhere, somehow I have to think how we could do it, like as far as to get it out there for people. It, 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 it would show, I guess, the point I'm trying to make, the, the, how anyone could do it from any walk of life. That it's a, it's a good idea. Because there's so you don't have to have a special skill set like be in finance or have been a trader or, or anything, you know. Yeah. Crap. I hope that wasn't the low of the day in this HPQ. I got off talking on a tangent now. Did anyone get out of the whole thing in there? I put the stop at break even, but I don't want that all to rally back. Well, let's just see here if we can lower the stop again. Out half at 34.10. All right, this is continuing. Don't have a cow. All right, let's look at the market. CHK, any thoughts? What do you What do you want here? This is a nice trade. Uh, if you're going to be in this all day, you're trying to get it down to the next number. If you don't have all day to be in it, get out. This is a nice trade. You could have done this. It's had a move. The entry was good. You could take half out here if it bounces, or you could hold the rest on. This isn't doing anything wrong. It's just going right down. I don't even know why you're asking me. Jeff's in this. Anybody else? There's nothing wrong with this. It's just dropping. 
Did anyone else do this? This is another nice call. I should have done them both. Surf Dog did it. Jeff's in it. You can sit all day if you want. Okay, so again, the Qs look very, very strong. Actually, they traded in a very tight range today, so it looks like we might be waiting till end of day today or tomorrow to break out higher. I do think it still happens this week, and I don't think it's going to happen now today unless it happens late, 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 late in the day. Let's look at the econ that's out for Friday. I actually think there's a lot that's supposed to come out Friday, and maybe that will be the instigator. Not that it needs it for the market to do the breakout and go shoo, higher. Let's just see here. Yep, bunch of stuff tomorrow, 838, 39, 45, and two things at 10. Man, to see this market as bullish today in the queues when I looked at it, and we have a little tiny run in the spy, but it's basically holding support. Now let's look and see what the other things did first too. This did go down and did break 23 and went to 2265. Did anyone do the kamikaze I called in it? It was here. Uh, this was the kamikaze call in it here, and it went right on down. It was a scalp, and it was a big one. Did anyone do it? That was two R's. I don't know if anyone did it. Here was a problem I had with that. Here was the gap this morning, and I didn't do anything with this because it ended up opening way down. So I never watched it. But you could have rated it. It was a valid gap. And if you had, you would have done it, and it worked. Oh, Jeff did it? Jeff's doing everything now. <laughs> Okay, did anyone do this? I know some of you did. I said 35. Again, support and resistance are areas, targets, 3519 bounced out. You know, again, really, really weird entry here this morning, but and low volume too. But it fell off a planet and went more than a dollar from the open. But it's done for the day here. I don't see anything else in this to do. Oh my goodness, this did flip. I thought, I thought Lionage, you said you did this and you said you made money in this. Let's go over it. I had an instinct. Instinct today, this wasn't going to work. But it actually did have a short play in it. If you had done this here, you could have done it. The stop was gymungous. I know I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it because I didn't have conviction and I wouldn't have done it when I saw the stop. Where did it go? It did actually have a move. Uh, it was almost a dollar. So it was one R and a little bit. If I had done this with a Jimungus stop and had a dollar in here, I would have gotten a out of at least half. If I had, it rallied back. You could have, you would have held it. You would have been okay through your price. It came down, 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 down. You would have been back positive again. Would you have gotten out of this? I don't know. It did not continue, and then it started to scoop and flip, and look, it's doing what I thought it was going to do out of the gate, but it's doing it late. And then I never called this. I didn't call it here. I didn't call it here. I still didn't even like it here, and I just never called it here, and I just didn't think it would work. Uh, what did I see that I didn't think it would work? I don't even have to wait for the mentoring session. I, I don't know. I just really, my gut instinct on this, this is nothing but experience, didn't like the gap. In fact, I did not like it when you even had it in the room and you rated it, Lineage. I know it was your top watch, and I know you had it in there, and I don't even think I rated it. That's how much I didn't like it. So could you have rated it? Yes. Could you have rated Taser and INTC today, too? Yes. Did I know? I just didn't, I just didn't like them. I just didn't like them, and, and so I, like I said this morning, I'm not going to spend time on things I don't like, because if I don't like it, I know I'm not going to do it, unless I have something that I don't like anything at all, but I did. I did like SFM this morning, but I did have a problem with the volume, even in the pre-market and on the intraday. It never came in the way I wanted to see it to sit up right, and in, in my mind, which I did verbalize this morning, and I wrote it in the room, I really felt the best thing today was the continuation gaps, and by the way, they are the best place. They had the best risk to reward and the nicest entries, and they're having decent moves. You had to wait. They weren't quick setups. They didn't go to the dream targets. But HPQ and CHK had the nicest moves today of setups to short. And I felt like no matter what the market did, those things were going to go today, where some of these things were back and forth sketchy. Now let's look at the DDD. Piece of crap. Could we watch this tomorrow for continuation? No. Don't even bother. Uh, I thought this was a chance it could work, but then as soon as I saw it, I said off. And you know what? The weird thing about this is it's actually gapped up first. You see here this gapped up first this morning and flipped. So this is the day. I mean, look, was, this is a 15-minute chart. It's straight up like a brick. Why? Because people did short this. Not only did people short this, actually it's getting bought. So it's getting bought in the day, and people did try to attack this and short it. 
I'm glad we didn't touch it. I kept us out of trouble here. Unfortunately now, I'm stuck in this thing, and so are you, unless you get a lot of it. Do I think it goes and breaks 34 in the next 10 minutes? No. Do I think it goes and breaks 34 by lunch? Maybe. You're up money in this. If you took it where I did, you could get all out if you feel like it. Here, you're still positive. You're positive money. You're positive more than one R. You're positive two R's here for the back half. I have to think about if I should just take this out. Let's see if it hits on the five. If it hits on the five, I'm lowering the stop, and I'll live with it. And if it doesn't, then I may just get out of it. But I did lower this. Here, come on. Uh, let's look at for tonight. And then we'll talk about the market, and then I'll let everybody go. Unless anybody has questions about anything else they want to talk about. Ah. Crocs. Finally. Let's look at this. GPS. Ooh, tomorrow's going to be a good day. And today could have been a hard day and it was a good day. We're going to have a good week. JC Penny's out tonight. Woo! Now I'm getting excited. Hold on, let me write some of these down. There's some big names out tonight. Yes, yippity doo dah. It is earnings season after all. All right. Okay, this is out tonight. Kind of thin today, but we can watch it. GPS is out tonight. Yeah, it's very thin today, Trader Gal. I agree 100%. Uh, this, this I like too. Not thin today, and we'll definitely gap. Rost, another biggie, out tonight. Wow, this gaps up. It's like a no-brainer. Uh, SREV, thin. Oh my gosh, this is worth nothing. But it still is fine to gap down, and it just will have a baby target. JCP, you know, I don't even remember if I looked at this in the last month. I, I don't even know what this looks like. I haven't looked at it. Let's look at it. Here we go. You know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. Let's not jinx ourselves, shall we? Because I think I did that the last time. Mum's the word. I'm not going to say a thing about JCP. So I don't jinx us. Uh, w, what did I, I did jinx us on one of the ones. Which one was it? Rax. <laughs> WPRT, very, very thin, nothing. Yoku. I'll put the list in the room. Man, this looks good too. Really like this. Well, we're definitely going to get a good one tomorrow. I have no idea what it is. It could be Crocs, SREV, JCP, WPRT, Yoku, GPS. I, I don't even know if I care. Uh, we will get a good gap tomorrow. Oh my goodness, the market. Oh my Lanta. I didn't call this long, but this is nuts. You could go long the QQQs. After 7,000 days up and put the stop at 107.90. There you go. It's a late call, but it, we could run up into the close today or all day today. I did. I thought we might wait till tomorrow, but it, we might not. We actually might not. We are rallying, and this is amazing to even have seen that in the gap today. Uh, now I know the market and now I know this and I'm trying to decide what to do. <sighs> Jaffo. Well, I'm just saying that I don't want to get people nuts in here where they start doing stuff in overnights. I mean, uh, before they gap. You know what I mean. Uh, here's the... Uh, Watch this for tonight. What? What? I, I. 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 Just let's just wait to the gap. I mean, I'm looking at stuff, trying to get an idea here, but I do like JCP. But I'm saying I don't. I don't want anyone to get in anything here until it gaps. 
but I'm saying of all the picks. Oh, WMT. Wow, this was a nice call. So those of you that are signed up for the swing trade letter, did anybody do it? Jaguar Paw, did you do it? In fact, I sent it out to the whole room this month. Although Dave said he didn't get it. He's already signed out. If, if my emails are going to your spams for the main, main big emails, you have to add me to your address book or safe list. And I think that's what happened with Dave because he said he didn't get it. And he's on my list. It probably went to his junks. Jaguar Paw, did you do it? This is a nice call. I didn't even look at it yesterday. Shower Singer didn't get it either. I'll resend it out today. I'll resend it out today. Take me. Put Melissa at the stockswish.com in your safe list and on your address book. That is why some of you sometimes have a problem with the room email because I have so many people now on the list. It it's only happens, it doesn't happen when I email you individually. It happens when I email a mass amount of people. And now there's so many people in the room that I'm blind copying. And, and on the big email, there's so many people that it goes, it plops it in the junks because it looks like a spammer because I'm blind copying or copying so many people. Just shout out. It just says shout out, Trader Gal. I'm going to resend it out. Here, I'm going to make myself a note. I'm going to resend the letter to everyone because I forgot to do that to Dave too. Bagwell Pod did an option play and now it's working. All right, let me just talk quickly about the market. First of all, does anyone have any questions? I'm trying to lower the stop on this again, but I can't yet. Wait till it hits in the five, and then we will. HPQ. Uh, did anyone do nothing today? And I'm just asking for so. And if you didn't, I don't, I, I mean, that's fine with you. I mean, it's okay, is what I'm saying. All right. <sighs> Tired. Let's go over the market. I'm going to address this and... I'm still going to have to do any uh, another video on it. But I'm going to talk about it here in the room. But I, I'm going to do a separate uh, video today on the market. I should anyways. But someone in the webinar, that same person that was attacking me, mentioned and said the market actually wasn't getting bought by institutions, that it was retail buying. Before I tell you why that isn't true, does anyone want to tell me why you think that person is right and you disagree with me and you agree with that person or why you think that it's not correct and you agree with me. I'm trying to get some discussion going here. Tell me your thoughts. I can't read your brain. Do you think this is institutional buying or retail buying here in the rally up in the market in the month of February? Yes or no? And if so, tell me why. Ah, look at today's affirmation. I am as successful as I make up my mind to be. That's a good one. I should start to put them in the room every day. Moves are too big for retail. Good observation, Jeff Bowie. And why do you say that? Because I could counter-argue you, although I know that you're right, um, and say, this isn't a big move, 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 it's hardly moving. They could say, well, this isn't a big move. Line 38 says, institution and retail, good earnings on stocks, U.S. market, best investment with returns out there. Oh, that's very complex, but that makes sense, too. 
it's institutional money because regular people cannot make those kind of moves. That is really actually the gist of it. So let's talk about Jaguar Paw actually said that. Jaguar Paw, who are you? I don't know what's happened to you in the last two months, but you're doing fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that really is what I was kind of going for here. And, and why? Because of the gaps. Okay? Because of the gaps. So the thing is that I know this is institutional buying because of the gaps. That's how I know. It's not that retail people aren't buying. Like Line 38 is saying, he's saying, hey, wait a minute, retail people are buying too. Yes, that's true. They are. Absolutely. But I'm also saying that that institutions have made the gaps too. And there are some new gaps. And so that actually is real money coming in that's new. Now, that's not to say that retail people or traders can't make moves, whether it's long or short. These moves that happen here to the downside in the market in the month of January, these red bars are real. Was this big institutional sell-off? No. Are the bars fairly large? Yes. I'm not going to disagree. These are decent-sized sell-off bars with shorts and some selling. These are not small. I wouldn't call a Megalodon. Uh, this is not that far from Megalodon, though, on this day here. This one, it's $4 plus. But these, this is some good, you know, red moves in here. And yet, this was an institutional selling. So the fact is that retail people can move stuff, whether up or down, and traders too. But how do you know to differentiate what's power money, whether it's to the downside or the upside, because of the gaps? Now, how will you know from the quality of the gap? And you say, Melissa, well then, well, then what are you talking about? There was a bearish gap here. There was a bearish gap here. There was a bearish gap here on January 5th. This could have been a bearish gap made by institutional money that could have sold off this chart in the entire market that could have ran red and we could be red now and we could be at 175 in the SPY, but we're not. Instead, we're at 211.34 today and we're making new highs. We're set to do it any second. So, but you could have rated this gap per my 26-point system to see if this was a gap that was going to fall through red on the day and in the long term. And also, you, if you knew the trends class, you could actually determine if that was actually a corrective gap that would change the trend if you wanted to long term, go long term in one direction, which would be down because this is bearish. It didn't have any follow through though. One day down into itself, you could have shorted it again. Would I have done that? No. But the follow through wasn't there. The overall uh, point of what everyone is seeing here though in this market is they're lacking conviction in the fact that it's higher. They're misunderstanding what's making the rally. They think it's retail people or whatever, or that it's late. Or even people that think this isn't retail people just buying it or traders just buying it or whatever, or people that aren't really big money, think that this is happening late, meaning that this is getting towards the height of an end, not a beginning, a new beginning. But the fact is, it's barely getting going here for 2015. And this is the beginning, which was before 2015. And this really has barely just begun. That's why the target of 222.25 is not enough of a target for the market. And this was the beginning, October 31st, 2014. So, I'm not looking at this as it's over and near to over. I'm looking at it as a new beginning, new money coming in, and how do I know I'm reading the gaps? These aren't big green bars. They're medium or small. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that. It has to do with the gaps. Like, oh 
gosh, I don't even know how to just say what I'm trying to say. You're here every day with me. Unless you sign out early or you didn't pay attention. Jaffo, email me. It's the end of March. I forget the dates. The trends class is the end of March. I forget the dates. I want to say 24, 25th. It's coming up. Three weeks. Jaguar Paw is saying something changed in him. Indeed, he's waiting for the week to end to write me an email. That's fine, ja uh, Jaguar Paw. I'm trying to see how I can say this right. Every day you've been in here with me, I've been calling the market intraday long. Every day I get up in the morning, I look at the market gap. And what do I say? I mean, every day in here I'm looking at the market gap and I'm calling the market long. What seems an impossible thing to be calling long. I wouldn't do that if I didn't see the follow through. And I wouldn't do that if I wouldn't read it in the gap in the price action. It's the gap in the price action and the gap that's making me see it to call an intraday long in a market that is up 17 days in a row. And I wouldn't be doing that if I wouldn't see something that is telling me that it's new money and it's new buying. And I'm seeing it in the price action and I'm seeing it in the price action of the gaps, but I'm seeing it in how I'm seeing the market trade. I'm calling the market long almost every day intraday, which is, I just called the market long now. I just said buy the market and I just told you where to put it to stop. I just did that in the queues. And I didn't call it in the spy, but I just called it in the queues and look, I just, look, here this morning, I said, oh my gosh, this is bullish as soon as I saw the gap. And if I see the gap bullish, that is in retail, people. That is, if I'm seeing the price action moving and I'm seeing the gap, like, I don't even know if I'm trying to say this right. Every day in here, I've been calling the market intraday long. That is almost an impossible call. It has worked nearly every day I have called it. In fact, I think it has worked every day I've called it. Has it not worked any day I've called it? No, it's worked every day I've called it. And I've been calling it in what seems like something that doesn't even make any sense. Because I'm calling it, I've been calling it up through here, I've been calling it. And it's because I'm reading the price action combined with the gap, which I see in the pre-market. And then on the live day, when I see the confirmation, which could be at 9.35, 9.31, it could be whenever I just saw this back in here, I looked at the market at 10.15, 10.30, 10.45, but I'm seeing it in the price action, which is institutional. I know how to read institutional money in stocks. I don't know what else to say. I don't even know if I'm saying, explaining myself right, but I, if you're here with me, you know that I do know how to read that because I call it so often that, it, that I do. I'm reading, I can read what money looks like. That's all I can say. I can read what money looks like. And that's because I know how to read gaps. How did I get to the point where I can read how money looks like? Because I'm reading gaps and trading gaps and doing nothing but gaps now for over seven years. And I see it in the pre-market and I see it on the open and I see it on the live day and I see it in the way the chart trades and I see the gap in the daily chart and I see the intraday charts and I see the one minute chart and I see how it acts in the open. And even a couple days ago, I don't remember the day, when I said the market, whatever the market does in the first 15 minutes of the day is going to count and come with directional bias for the market of the day. Even that day, the market broke the low. And I don't even remember the day. And then it still held and rallied that day. What day was that? Was it this day? Was it, was it Friday or Monday? Or was it the 24th? What was the day that I did that, when I said that? Here, it was this day. It was the 24th. It was the 24th. And I said what it was going to do, and I said it in the morning in the pre-market. Yep, it was the 24th. This is what I'm talking about. This, this, this could not happen like this if it was an institutional buying. Let's go over this. This is a good. This is a good. This is good here, because I don't even know if I'm able to make my point right here. And the gap I saw, and I said what the market needed to do. It opened, went over the high, came in, went over the high. You were up your money. If you had the stop too tight, you got stopped out. I called the train. It held through it. If you put it at 75, I didn't hold 80. But then if you booped out of it at 80, I said, buy it again. Called it again in here, broke through the low. But this is past the time of the day where I told you about what it needed to do. In the first 15 minutes of the day, it did what it needed to do here. Like I knew that it needed to do, which the way I saw the open of the gap. And the market rallied that day. And if you bought it, you made money. How would, why would this act like this? Buying. This, 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 that is not retail buying. This isn't retail buying. So 
So I get why people think it is because they don't understand how to read gaps, but the price action is so strong to indicate to me that this is new buying or real money ever since all of this. I mean, all of this, all in this, this whole thing in here, all of this, everything that's happened here since October, all of it. There's nothing in here that isn't re that isn't institutional buying. Nothing. There, everything in here it signifies institutional buying. Forget this. I'm not even talking about that right now. Everything this market has done, all in here. That was the point I was trying to make in the webinar, and it was I think it was lost. And I think sometimes things I say to people are lost or go over their heads that I talk about in these webinars. But I said even if you think it's not there, it's there. Even if you think it's not there, it's there. Even if you think that an institution isn't there, it is there. It's always there. It's there till it exits. Or if you are in something that's downtrending and it's not being bought by it, or it could be, it could be there in a short position. It could be there in a short position. Even if you think it's not there, it's there. And that's why you have to be very careful about what direction you trade things when you take over nights. And that's why shorting this market is very dangerous to people. So I believe now that we will continue aggressively over the high. And it could be tomorrow or if not the first week of March. I believe we will. I said a couple of days ago we are not going to pull back at all before we go over and make a new high. And we won't. And now I believe that we will aggressively go over the high aggressively in a big green day. So, uh, and that will look like probably what people think of as an extension to the end, and it will not be. It will not be the end of the move of the market this year, and it will not be the end of the move of anything. And I'm not saying the market doesn't pull back after that, although I don't know until I read the gap. But I'm saying that it's not retail buying that's making this. All of this is new buying. All of, all of this is new buying. All, all, all of this, all of this is new buying, institutional buying that keeps coming in, 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 keeps coming in. And like Line 38 said, retail people are buying it too. He is right. He is right about that as well. But traders keep looking at this market, salivating to short it. Some people are shorted still, even though they're shorted and they're down and they haven't given up on it because they really think that this is the end. And if they hang on to the position, do you see the difference between rich people and non-rich people? I'm going to say one more thing. I'll let you go. If, 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 if traders are in this market short and had their stop at a certain place and didn't take it out over 209 or 210 because they don't want to lose and they're down, they're down in the trade. The market's still rallying. It's proving and looking like it's going to make a new high, but they're down in the position and they shorted the market and they shorted it and they should have never done it. But they didn't go long it or they ran long and it took out and they shorted it and they believe it's lower. They're down in the trade. They're over their stop. It's a paper stop. They did an overnight. They didn't take it out and they're not going to until it gets up through the high, which they don't think it's going to happen. Or if it does, they'll give it a little move over that. The whole time they're down. They're down right now. They're down over 208, 209, 210, and they're down now at 211. And of course, they'll be down then at 213, 215 if they shorted the market. They're refusing to get out, even though they're down, because they don't want to accept the loss. Do you actually think that highly intelligent, very sophisticated, wealthy people that exist on the planet act and think like that? The answer is no. The answer is no. The answer is definitively 100% conviction no. So when I say in the gap class, think about the people that you're trading against and know the people you're trading against and the people that are in the market with you are brilliant. When I say that to you, I'm saying that to you because it's true. And I'm saying that to you because it's real. And I'm saying you have to think about that. And if you think like a brilliant person, you will do well if you trade in the market. And if you do not think like a brilliant person, then the odds of you doing well are not that great. Does that mean that you have to be brilliant before you meet me? No, but it means that if you listen to everything I say, if you do every class I have, if you're here with me every day, and just let everything I say suck into your brain cells, then you will get it. And I do my best to explain it. But I'm telling you that this idea that institutions sometimes have to take losses and stuff and don't want really to get out of them because they don't accept a loss is insane. And they will. They will accept the loss and they'll do something else. And the risk is not so over leveraged or over the percentages or over exercised that they can't afford to take a loss because they can and they will. Whereas traders who are not brilliant and are not smart 
will feel like they can't take a loss, which maybe they can afford if they kill the trade at 210, but will feel actually like they can't afford a 215. So if they can barely afford it at 210 for a loss, why can, will they be able to better afford it at 215? They won't. And instead, they will take a loss bigger than the original loss, and they will suffer, and they will maybe be out, out of the game for a couple of months or a couple of years, or at least for the time being, or have to borrow money or hedge themselves or do other crazy, risky things. Brilliant people make wise financial decisions. For the most part, I'm generalizing, and if you're in fear about money, then you won't make accurate financial decisions. So I teach you not to be in fear about money and many, many traders are in fear about money and take risky positions and people that run hedge funds, I'm not saying that they're not in fear or that they don't take risky positions because there's all different kinds of hedge funds out there. And not every hedge fund is successful or makes money. I'm generalizing. Please understand that. But I'm saying know that there are brilliant people with a lot of money who are wealthy that are in the market and they are running hedge funds and they have a lot of money and they have positions in these stocks. And there are big banks in the market too. Too, and they do things that make sense and they do think about the things that they do and they do have a lot of money and you can't trade against them and if you are in the market and you're one person with your regular account then you want to act like a brilliant sophisticated wealthy person if you ever want to get there and if you don't even want to get there and you don't even care then that's fine but you still should learn to be brilliant because even if you don't care about being rich the money that you have you will lose in the market if you don't care about being smart with it. You see that the market where at the closed institutions will short a stock with almost a half a million shares and the next day the stock would rally almost a dollar but then it comes down in the end it was a brilliant short. I don't know what you're talking about Jaffo. Give me an example. Like I just can't look at something and just generalize that statement. Like I need to know what you're looking at here. I think I gave a good lecture today but I don't, I don't even know if it made any sense because I'm rambling. Ah, and as I'm rambling, this gets going on to work. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. And nobody even said anything to me. Obviously, everyone's happy. Let's lower the stop to 34. Hold on. Yeah, let's do it. All right, 34.40 here. HPQ. Boom or bust. And this looks great. Because look at the market. Jocko, give me a chart. And if you can't think of one now, you can ask me tomorrow because it's late, but I just lowered the stop on this at 3440 and it is going to break the loan. It's not doing anything wrong, but it is late here. And so if this goes and drops and breaks 34, I'll be out of it. But actually this could go to the next number. Find a chart. We'll look at it tomorrow. Good discussion today and basically good job today. Everyone should be up. Um, what did this other one do? Beautiful. Um, I actually would be out of this. 20 cents from the target, nice trade in here. I'd be out of 80% of this, if not the whole thing. If you didn't take the whole thing out and you're still in this, I would try to lower the stop to break even on the rest of that. And you could be long the market, but I really only called the cues. And it's ready over the high, and it's trying to get over the high from yesterday. Jeez. I mean, I couldn't be, listen, I'm going to say one last thing. I'm really going to let everybody go. I could not be calling the market long every day after it's rallied up 7,000 days intraday and having every day the calls that I make in the market long work. Some were little trades, some were big trades, some were small, some were medium, but none of them failed. And I couldn't be doing that if the market wasn't getting bought. Buy real money. Every day I'm talking about. Not just one day, not just two days. Every day, I, I've almost been calling the market long every day. Every day and today, I'm calling the market long. T varied times. Varied times. And I say different things in the pre-market about it. But I've still been calling it, and it's still been working. And how is that possible? Because it's being bought. And it's not like I've been calling the market long every day and today for the last two years. Although every day I get up and I say what I see or whatever, or I... And the overall trend's been bullish. But just because a trend is bullish doesn't mean you go long the stock in the market every day. But I'm actually calling intraday setups. All right, have a good day. See you tomorrow. We're going to get a big day tomorrow. I don't know what it is, but we're going to have a good, good gap. There's 50 things that look great. We can get them all. We can get one. I only need one. Nice way. We're gonna, we are going to close out the month of February, which is a bullish month. We're going to close out the week and the month strong. We're going to go into March like the professionals we are. We are brilliant people. You're here with me. You're getting it. You're doing it. You're up.
Good job, everyone, today. All right, have a good day. You're welcome.